actually these have been extensions of what God has given me to grow from. We're in West Palm Beach, Florida at this particular time in the public library where they have a studio that's available for people to use. If you got a library card, um, come in here and I, I, I do our sermons here. And we share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Um, coming to you on Facebook Live, YouTube for playback, and Instagram Live. And like I said, we'll be sharing a word that God gave me at the end of our first fruits fast in January called Finding Grace. A very timely word, a word that we can never wear out. There's never going to be a time in our lives as, as, as believers that we're walking this walk, talking this talk, that we will not need to understand and recognize the grace of Almighty God. So God has given me this word like I shared before. Um, in the end of January, and um, I'm just now getting around to being able to minister because there's been a whole lot of stuff going on. There's still stuff going on. Our adversary, the devil, is determined to try to keep people from out of the from the promises of God. But those of us who are hard-headed and determined to get what God has for us, we're going to keep on pressing toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Let us pray, Father in heaven. We thank you in the name of Jesus Christ. Everything you've done, everything you're doing. Excuse me, if, 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 if there's anything else that's not completely the way we want it to be in our lives, you're always right, God. You're always perfect. You're always the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. We can always look to you for our help. You know, we look to the hills from which come up for our help, for our help coming from the Lord. There are times in this life where we will try to look to the left, to the right, up and down, all over the place, Father God, but we know that we can only look to you because it's in you that we live, we move, we have our being. Thank and praise you, Father God, for these platforms you've given me to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, as this word that you've given me, Father God, that it falls on good ground, that it will be water and you will give the increase. There's somebody out there right now who's out there without hope, without food, without water, without shelter, without legal representation, whatever the case may be, Father God, but we know it's in, everything's in you. They get you, they will have everything they need to sustain and overcome in this world we're living in. Now allow the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart to be pleasing in your sight, Father God. I give you all the praise. I give you all the honor and I give you all the glory. In Jesus Christ's name we pray for now and forever. Hallelujah and amen. Like I said, this subject that we're speaking on is called Finding Grace. What is grace? What is grace? Grace is the opposite of karma. And sometimes reaping, which is all about getting what you deserve. Grace is getting what you don't deserve. Grace is unmerited divine assistance given to humans. I'm going to say that again. Grace is the opposite of karma and reaping because grace is what you do not deserve. That's what grace is. If we all got what we deserved according to the Bible we will all be men and women most miserable. So grace is the opposite. It's unmerited divine assistance given to humans. That's one of the many definitions of grace. So we find our text in the book called Exodus. But before we can go there, I believe it's important to give a backdrop to help you understand how we get to where we're going. Excuse me. So often, so often, things are taken for granted because of the lack of knowledge. You know, I believe beyond a shadow of any and every doubt that we unknowingly take gravity for granted. You know, we wake up in the morning, you know, when our feet hit the ground, if, if, if the grace of gravity or the law of gravity, there's a law of gravity, wasn't being sustained by Almighty God, that we would just be floating around. We would need to have to probably wear some big old giant heavy boots or something to keep us grounded. That's just a small example of one of the many things that I believe that we take for granted because we just simply don't understand how grace is and how unmerited it is that we get to sustain by it. 32, let's go to 31. So we're going to speak from Exodus chapter 31, I believe. I said this is a word that God had given me, you know. I had to 
It's been on the back burner because I haven't been online. Exodus chapter 31. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, See, I have called thee by name, Bezaliah, the son of Ur, the son of Hur, the tribe of Judah. Verse 3. And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and all manner of workmanship. It's important that we understand, like I just read when we prayed, or said when I prayed, that it is in God we live, we move, we have our being. So God, the, the Exodus chapter 31 verse 3 says, And I have filled him with the Spirit of God in wisdom and understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. Another reason why we have to be mindful to give God praise and glory for everything that he's done, everything he's doing. Because it's only in him that we're able to do the things that we do. I know it's God, Lord have mercy. Um, sometimes I just sit back and meditate. Being 51 years old in April this year, God tarries, um, how all the many experiences and situations and circumstances God has brought me to and through. Verse 5. And in cutting the stones to set them to carver the timber to work a manner of workmanship. Verse 6, And behold, I have given with him the son of Aholeth, a, a the son of Ahisamlech, the, the tribe of Dan, and in his hearts. All that are wise hearted, to, I have put wisdom that they may make all that I have commanded thee. So what the Spirit of the Lord is, you got to understand something. When God gives you a vision, he will give you provision, and he will give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding how to carry out whatever it is he's called you to do. I've heard people be called of God to do things, and they allow the, 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 the size of what they've been called to do to overwhelm them to where they feel like they can't do it. I want to skip over to 32. Verse 1, And when the Lord saw that Moses delayed to come, excuse me, and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down, out of the mouth, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as this Moses, the man that have brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not what has become of him. So the children of Israel, let me give you a quick backdrop for those who don't read the Bible. Children of Israel, 430 years of bondage, God raised up Moses, sent Moses in, gave Moses Aaron to deliver the people out of bondage. So we find ourselves and the children of Israel on their way to the promised land. And on their way, God took them what was a, should have been an 11-day journey, which ended up taking 40 years because of their disobedience. And we see them on their way. And, and this first verse in 32 says, the people, Moses went up to get the commandments or went up to talk to God. They don't know what he was doing, but he went up to talk to God concerning them on behalf of them. And now he's not coming down as fast as they think they could, so people are getting restless and they're losing their faith. Verse 2, And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people break off the golden earrings which were in the ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand and fastened it with a graving tool. And the reason why I read 31 in the verse of 31 is that even though the children of Israel were in bondage 430 years, was that five, six generations, God allowed them to learn how to do the things they're going to do, which they're going to use against God. It's so important that we understand people are so quick to give credit and glory to everything. Well, my job taught me this, my mama taught me that, my daddy taught me this. Um, I went to school for this. No, none of that is even true. In the beginning was the word. God is always first. We are so quick to give credit and glory. Oh, you know, I went to school for this. It doesn't even matter. At the, the, those things don't matter. At the end of the day, you got to get to the root of why you have what you have. And we know at the end of the day, it's going to be the grace of Almighty God for those of us who give God glory and credit for everything. So Aaron is telling his people to break off the earrings in verse 3, which were in their ears, and bring them up to Aaron. Because I stepped this out and I said, how did Aaron know how to make a golden calf? He was taught to do what he know how to do from the Egyptians in slavery, but it was through the wisdom and knowledge of Almighty God. So the things that God has given us to do are to give him glory and praise and honor. It's not for the world. 
So often we get that confused. You know, I understand that I have the gift of uh, playing drums. And I've, all my life, I've, I've tried to give that gift back to God, give glory to God with that gift. I could have played secular music. I could have played in secular groups. I, could, I, I just refused to do that because I realized God gave me that gift for him. I also had the gift of doing art and drawing. I've always tried to give God glory with my gifts of art and drawing. So if I'm doing something, I'm going to do some Christian t-shirts or something that will give God glory. Now, I'm not throwing shade on anybody else's choice and decision. I'm talking about me. Because I realized even though... The secular realm may have been used to teach me these things. It was the grace of God that allowed me to know and have these gifts and talents. Verse 3, And the people break off the golden earrings from their ears and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them in his hand and fashioned it with a graving tool. So Aaron, got to understand something, Aaron was the first high priest of the people and children of God. After he had made it a molten calf, they said, These be the gods, plural S, O Israel, was brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. So, they are literally, with their clear conscience, creating gods to lead them because they, they don't know where Moses is. If this ain't a, 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 a complete loss of faith in everything that God has delivered them to this point, they, got, they, they, they convinced Aaron, who was the high priest, to, to, to create them a golden calf. And he received them at your hand in verse 4 in chapter 32 in Exodus with a graving tool. And he made it a molten calf. And he said, These be the gods, O Israel, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. So and they're saying that the gods brought them out of the land of Egypt. How much sense does that even make? If Egypt was used to keep you in bondage, why would those same gods be used to deliver you from that said bondage? It don't even make sense to give credit and glory to anything but Almighty God. You cried for a deliverer, God sent you a deliverer in the person of Moses and then gave you Aaron as a high priest. And then you're going to sit here and say, the gods delivered you from that same bondage? That It don't even make sense. Sin don't never make sense. The world don't never make sense. Excuse me. It's amazing, and by way of relation, I want to share this. God has shown me the very things that keep people bondage in, in t at times are the very things that they created. In other words, you was working on putting yourself in bondage instead of coming to bring yourself out of bondage. I don't want to get particular. I hear the Holy Ghost speaking concerning so many areas of life that we find ourselves being bound to, houses, cars, people we ain't supposed to be connected to, and we create those things. God didn't create them. We create them. We create our bondage and we cry to God, God, let set me free. And then what happens when we get free? We create another form of bondage to put ourselves in. That's the mindset of the human being. Verse 6 in uh, Exodus chapter 32. And they rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. So they convinced Aaron, who was the high priest at that time, since they, had their own, they lost faith in the fact that Moses is up on the mountain we don't know if he's coming back, so let's create uh, the, some raggedy gods that we, we, we had learned how to make in Egypt to lead us since we don't. That, what did they do? They, they, got, they went right back to their fleshly nature. God sent them a deliverer in the person of Moses, and when they didn't see Moses with their physical eyes anymore, they lost faith and reverted back to their own the nature that got them in bondage in the first place. Ain't that just like people? I remember, I'm not going to talk about nothing in depth because I don't want to uh, mess with nobody, but I remember back in the day, there was a time growing up going to church, people used to feel like if the bishop wasn't going to be there, that we wasn't going to go to church because we felt like he the only person that could preach a word. Uh, and, or we ain't going because the bishop ain't going to be there this week. I used to think about that as I was growing up. I said, who are we here to hear? Why are we coming to church? Are we coming to church only because that one set person can speak from God? I had to deliver myself from that mentality. Because I had created a golden calf in the form of the bishop. Now, I know a lot of people are going to be like, no, they can't. Yes, they can. Read your Bible. This is Aaron, the high priest, doing this. This ain't some, some Joe Bob they picked out the crowd. No, they picked the high priest to make a golden calf to lead the people. He knew better. Let's read on. And they, they rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play in the... And the Lord said unto Moses, Get thee down, for the people which thou brought us out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. So Moses is up there basking in the presence of Almighty God, getting the commandments for the people. 
just chilling. I mean, and, and then the Lord was like, hey, man, you got to go. You have to go back. The people are losing faith. They don't lost their mind. They're down there cutting the food. Verse 8. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them that they made them multicast and have worshipped it and have sanctified thereunto and said, These be the gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And you wonder why the scripture says that God is a jealous God. Let me give you a backdrop of your own life. So God allowed your grandmother to meet your grandfather and your mother to meet your father for you to come forth. He has protected you from the womb to the room all the way to whenever we, you get put in a tomb. After all of that, you want to give credit to anything and everything else. Lucky rabbit's foot, lucky coin, all this foolishness that people get into, all these pagan secular holidays. Don't think this ain't going on in 2020 because we're reading about it in Exodus because it's going on right now. People give credit and glory to everything else. But don't, don't be in despair. This sermon is called Finding Grace. We're going to get to you in a minute. Verse 9, the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Verse 10 in uh, Exodus chapter 32, Now therefore let, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them, that I may consume them, and I will make thee a great nation. So at that particular time, the Lord wanted to consume them. And he told Moses, I'll make a great nation from you. We, we can start this thing over again. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doeth thy wrath wax hot against thy people, which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Verse 12, Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say for mischief did he bring them out and slay them on the mountains and consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. So Moses is interceding on behalf of the people to God. I learned a long time ago when you're in a place of position that somebody else might not be concerning your relationship with Almighty God, it's so you could intercede for people. You know, so many people brag and boast, I hear from God, I talk to God, you know, all this, that, that, your position is so you can intercede for people who are not that close. The Bible lets us know, makes it very clear that the strong shall and bear the infirmities of the weak. And it's not that we have already attained. It's just the fact that we are in a position where we have gone through more things and experienced things so we can intercede and pray for people. Not that we're better than nobody. That's not the, that's not the purpose of the position. 13. Remember Aaron, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and say from them, I will multiply your seed. So Moses is bringing to remembrance to God, not that God has forgotten, but it's really for us because it's written as an example for us. Moses is reciting, Lord, remember the covenant you made with your people concerning the people. Now, you got to understand this, God being omniscient and who he is, that he already know that these folks ain't making it to the promised land. That's why I understand this Bible was written for us in 2020. People who don't understand how the Bible is the foreshadow of things that Jesus Christ will fulfill and then once again what he would do before he returns to the earth. It's a foreshadow. These examples were given for us. Moses is talking to God, but God is speaking to us right now in 2020. There's some people need to hear this message right now. Wherefore say if the Egyptians speak and say for mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and consume them from the face of the earth. Turn thee from their fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Verse 13, remember Abraham, Isaac, and, and Israel, thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thy own self, and saith unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have sp spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. So Moses just repeated to God his word, not that God had forgot, but he said that for us. Verse 14, the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto this people. Verse 15, Moses turned and went down from the mount, and the two tables of the testimony were in his hand. And the tables were written on both their sides. On the one side and on the other were they written. Now, you need to take note of the fact that this was not repeated when they got the replacement stones, it didn't say that the stones was writ, wrote on, on both sides. That's just a food for thought. 16, and the tables were the work of God, 
and the writing was the writing of God, graven upon the table. 17, and Joshua heard the noise of the people as they shouted and said, Moses, said unto Moses, there is a noise of war in the camp. Verse 18, and he said, it is not the voice of them that shout for mastery, neither is it the voice of them that cry for being overcome, but the noise of them that sing do I hear. So Moses helped Joshua discern the noise that was going on in the camp. So it's not a, not a noise of war. It's not a noise of somebody being master taking over. He said, this, this is a, they're, they're, they're celebrating. 19, and it came to pass as soon as he came nigh to the camp that he saw the calf and the, and the dancing. And Moses' anger waxed hot and he cast the tables out of his hands and break them beneath the mount. And he took the calf which they had made and burnt it in the fire, round it to powder, straw to the water, and made the children of Israel drink of it. And Moses said unto Aaron, What did this people unto thee, that thou hast excuse me, brought so great a sin upon them? And Aaron said, Let not thy anger let not the anger of my Lord wax hot. Thou knowest the people that they are set on mischief. 23, for they said unto me, make us gods, this is what the people said unto him, make us gods which shall go before us, for as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not that what has become of him. And he said unto them, whosoever hath any gold, let them break it off. So they gave it me, then cast in the fire, and there came out this calf. So Aaron just explained to his brother Moses how it was that he created some fake gods to lead them. Verse 25, and Moses saw that the people were naked. Excuse me. And Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among their enemies. Now, in reference to nakedness, go back to Genesis after Adam and Eve had sinned, um, they said they heard the Lord walking and they were afraid and hid themselves because they were naked. And God said to Adam and Eve, who told you you was naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I told you not to eat? So what I'm trying to say to you is that when, when we sin against Almighty God, we are naked and ashamed. We do things when we do things against our God, according to the word of the living God, we felt we sh you, you should, actually conviction and sh a shame should be upon you. Verse 20, and when Moses saw the people were naked, for Aaron had made them naked unto their shame among the enemies. Then Moses 26, and Moses stood at the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come to me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves to him. See, there is always a way of an escape. See, they had all conspired to build this golden calf. And now Moses, God told Moses to go down and rebuke them and correct them and deal with the golden calf. Now we see in verse 26, that Moses stood at the gate of the camp and said, who was on the Lord's side? So they're getting an opportunity to repent and get on the side back where they need to be at. And the Bible says, And the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying each and every day in each and every situation and circumstances that people create for themselves uh, in the form of conviction, who is on the Lord's side. What's that mean? I'm going to do it God's way. I'm going to do what the Word of the living God say. It's not popular. Everybody's not going to agree with it. You know, I understand that they've created laws and, 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 and things in this current time that go against the word of the living God. And I'm going to have to make a conscious decision on if I'm going to go along with what this world is doing or I'm going to do what the word says. We are there. So he here it says, Who's on the Lord's side? And the sons of the Levites gathered themselves together. Verse 27 and 32 of uh, Exodus. And he said to them, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, Put every man his sword by his side and go in and out from the gate throughout the camp and slay every man his brother and every man his companion and every man his neighbor. 28. 
and the children of Levi did according to the word of Moses, and there fell amongst to their fell of the people that day about three thousand men. I hear the Holy Spirit speaking in reference to the scripture that when Jesus spoke, he said, I have not come to bring peace but a sword. You have to understand something. Everybody's not going to follow Jesus Christ. Everybody that say, Lord, Lord, will not enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those to the will of my Father which is in heaven. You have to make a conscious, honest, earnest decision to follow Jesus Christ with all your heart, mind, body, and soul. <clears throat> and the children of Levi did according to the way words of Moses, and there fell about 3,000 men. Verse 29. For Moses had said, Consecrate yourselves today to the Lord, even every man upon his son and upon his brother, that he may bestow upon you a blessing this day. So he told them to consecrate themselves and prepare to receive, bestow a blessing this day. This is grace. We're going to get into it. And it came to pass on all that Moses said, said unto the people, You have sinned a great sin, and now I will go up to the Lord. Peradventure I shall make an atonement for your sins. So we see atonement be, for the first time being made for the sins of the people. This went on all the way until Jesus Christ, his blood, made a, the final atonement for us. Because before Jesus Christ, once every year, the high priest went into the holies of holies. The only time anybody entered into the holies of holies to make atonement for the sins of himself, for the people, and the nation. I'm going to read 30 again. And it came to pass tomorrow that Moses said unto the people, You have sinned a great sin. Now I will go up to the Lord peradventure. I shall make an atonement for your sins. And Moses returned to the Lord and said, Oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made them golds of gods of gold, excuse me. Yet now, if thou wilt forgive their sin, and if not, blot me, I pray thee, out of thy book, which thou hast written. That's what I love about the word of the living God. Now he's speaking of the, 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 the book that's also spoken of in Revelations. That's why it's so important for you to understand the Bible connects itself from the beginning, the middle, and the end. There's no place where the Bible contradicts itself. That's why the Bible says that you to have an ear to hear, let them hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The Bible talks about you have eyes that see not, you have ears that hear not, but you're supposed to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So Moses is speaking of the book. He says, I pray thee out of thy book which thou hast written. And the Lord said unto Moses, Whosoever hath sinned against me will I blot out of my book. Therefore now go, lead this people unto the place which I have spoken unto thee. Behold, my angels shall go before thee. That's an awesome thing, excuse me. The angel will go before you. Nevertheless, in the day when I visit it, I will visit their sins upon them. And the Lord plagued the people because they made a calf, which Aaron had made. I did a little research on what the big deal was about this calf and why was they was trying to use a calf to lead them. And what God was showing me is that we have, when we lose faith, in the word of living God, we create these safety zones. We create things that, that gives us a false sense of security. Some of us is money. Some of us is, is, is uh, I got the best uh, health care money can buy, so I don't have to worry about getting sick. Yeah, right. I, you know, some people is money. No, I can't never be broke because I got this much. I got the 401k, got this set up, got, yeah, right. And some people, they find safety in, in, in the company of men and women. Well, I know X, Y, and Z, so no matter what happens to me, I got back. Yeah, right. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is our only true security. And we need to be mindful of the fact of the things that God did in creating us that we can be completely secure in Him and nothing, and nothing, and in nothing else. We're going to read, read a few more verses of scriptures into uh, chapter 33. I'm to make sure I said this is a word that God gave me back in the um, end of the fast and, and um, 
I've been sitting on it, but I've been waiting to, to share it. And um, the sermon is.